Hi, welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be talking all about the lovely plans I've got for my autumn sewing. Thanks for all of the lovely comments on last week's video. It is so nice to be back sharing my sewing journey with you all and I've got such lovely things to be sharing with you over the next year. Uh, lots and lots of exciting plans and adventures in sewing to share with you all. So thank you for coming back. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would so love you to become one of my regular viewers. So do hit the subscribe button below the video and the notification bell, and then you'll be made aware of when I share future videos. And if you do enjoy today's content, do also hit the like button. That just helps YouTube to then share my video with other people who might also enjoy watching about sewing. So I'm going to jump straight in. I have a gorgeous stack of patterns and fabric, and I can't wait to get stuck in and share these plans with you. I've got four things that I would like to sew for myself over the autumn, and one thing for my daughter. Now, as ever, there will be other things that jump into that list there may be some things that don't get sewn up and that's okay too but these are four things that I've been thinking about for a very long time and I'm quite excited to try sewing them up this autumn. Now the first pattern actually is one I've been looking at for a very long time and it is a dress inspired by one I have seen on the high street it is sadly outside of my budget but I would like to try making it for myself. Now it is this beautiful dress here and I will put a link to it below. It is the most stunning patchwork dress. Now I then saw on Instagram the lovely Jenna who is the lady who lunches also saw this dress and has already made one up for herself. Do go and check out her Instagram feed. It is full of the most beautiful clothes that she makes and this gorgeous patchwork dress that she sewed up too. So given those two wonderful sources of inspiration, I also want to have a go at sewing up one of these dresses for myself. And the pattern that I think would work really well for that is the By Hand London Tamsin dress. It has a similar square bodice. It has the princess seams and it also has a tie at the back which the original pattern seems to have and I think it should be relatively straightforward to pop in a square patchwork panel on the front and then I'll have to think quite carefully about the maths in terms of fitting that around the skirt piece but I'm really looking forward to giving that a go over the autumn. I actually haven't had the fabric for that dress arrive yet despite ordering it a little while ago but I'm hoping to use a navy cotton and linen mix chambray fabric from Lady McElroy. I just think that navy base will look really really lovely for the autumn and the winter and I'm hoping I can layer that up with perhaps a turtleneck underneath perhaps one of my Freya tops or one of my uh, merino turtlenecks underneath that dress when it gets colder. And the fabric that I've got for the patchwork arrived already and it is a cotton lawn and this came from So Me Sunshine. I absolutely love the bright colours on this but with the navy base I also think it will work really well in the autumn and the winter. So that is going to go with the navy linen cotton chambray from Lady McElroy and I'm hoping that those two will go really well together and I'm going to give that dress a go very very soon. Now in terms of my autumn sewing I wear a lot of dresses now today I'm wearing the golden rod dress by French Navy. This was a pattern that I tested for them earlier on in the year. I absolutely love it. I love the sort of squarish neck here. It has princess seams in the bodice. This version I made with buttons but there is a view that just has the invisible zip at the side. It has delicate sort of puffed sleeves and then a gathered skirt. It has been such a comfortable dress to wear over the summer and I can see myself laying it up with a cardigan actually and tights and boots into the autumn months. I'll link the pattern below and the fabric that I used is sadly not available anymore but it was a beautiful broidery viscose lawn from Sew Me Sunshine. Uh, it is quite a heavy fabric so I did end up having to take about an inch and a half out of the shoulder seams just to account for the weight of the skirt but having done that it's just such a lovely soft and breezy fabric to wear. So given that I just love wearing dresses, I find them very comfortable. I do suffer from bloating and pain. So I do like to wear something that isn't so fitted across my waist and the dresses are perfect. So given how much I love to wear dresses, I just decided I needed a few more autumn and winter dresses in my wardrobe so that I can continue wearing my beloved dresses throughout the colder months. So I did see this denim dress and again I will link the source below and I just love it. I love the exposed zip up the front, I love the way the collar sits, it's, I think it's a 70s collar and it just sits lovely and flat and I love the long sleeves with a slight puff at the top and the cuff at the bottom. So I bought from Sew Me Sunshine again a lovely dark denim, I can't remember what the weight is but I'll link the fabric below in the description box. It's not too heavy in terms of sewing that dress and I would like to make it with all of the lovely top stitched details so I didn't want one that was too heavy either to wear or to sew in terms of making a dress out of it. 
but I think it will hold the puff of the sleeves really well and it's a nice weight of denim for a sturdy autumn and winter dress. So that's the fabric that I'm going to be using. But finding a pattern was quite a lot more tricky. I wondered about using the Lyra dress by Tilly the Buttons as a base. I wondered about using the Patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company as a base because both of those patterns I have sewn up before. However, I wasn't sure about how I was going to amend the button stand on the Patina blouse to put in a zip. I'm sure that would have been okay. I would have had to just think about that a little bit. And again, with the Lyra dress, I didn't want the collar stand and I wasn't sure about how to redraft the collar. Again, both of those issues I probably could have overcome, but I am quite a busy mum of three and I don't know that I have time to be sorting out how to redraft collars and button stands uh, and get that dress sewn up in time for the autumn. Given that my first project I shared with you, the patchwork dress is probably going to be quite an involved make. So what I did do was I found this simplicity pattern. Now this is a 1970s reissue. It is the S9700, I'll link it below. And it is a jumpsuit pattern, but you'll see, and I'll pop the line drawings up here, it has that lovely 70s collar, it has a zip up the front, it has the pockets on the breast. So all I'm going to do with that one is cut it off at the waist and add a gathered skirt. So that should be relatively straightforward. I might do a bit of a quick twirl to check the sizing on that to make sure that I get the right fit in the bodice, but I think that will work beautifully for that dress and it's all there ready to go. I have bought a jeans zip that's long enough for my measurement from my chest here down to my waist. So I'll use that and I'll hold it up against the pattern piece. They usually have waist markings on these patterns so I'll do a little bit of finagling to make sure that I cut it at the right point for my waist, uh, but really looking forward to giving that pattern a go with that denim. Now, as I mentioned last week, we are hoping to do a little bit of traveling before Christmas. And one thing I don't have in my wardrobe is a dressing gown that I really enjoy wearing. I really love sort of almost vintage style fit. I like uh, shaping at my waist. I have an apron that I wear all the time that's sort of a pinafore style, it cinches in at the waist, and I just love the way that that makes me feel. So given how I love sort of the vintage fit and flare style, I decided to go with a vintage sort of style dressing gown. Now, it's probably a way too extra, but I don't mind. I love it. And it is the McCall's M7875. Now, it's a bit hard to see from the colour because that's the pyjamas that come with the pattern, which are also really cute. I'm hoping to make this full-length dressing gown. Now, I'll pop in a picture here so you can see it, but I really love the shape of that. It looks quite perfect for wafting around the house on a cool autumn morning. And the fabric that I've bought to make that with is a Rose and Hubble cotton pop and I bought that from Pound Fabrics. Now it is in this dark black colour so I think it will look quite gorgeous and elegant I'm hoping for the autumn months and it's got this beautiful pop of pink and white. Now I might use some piping to bring that out in the pink but I am thinking of just using this fabric. I'm not going to do a contrasting collar. I may quilt the collar but I'm just going to use this fabric. I think the pattern is already enough of a statement in itself without making a statement collar to go with it. So I'm going to use this fabric and the McCall's 7875 to make myself an elegant dressing gown for the autumn months. Now I'm sure not much wafting is going to be done with three children needing breakfast and taking out to the park and various other things but it's something that I wanted in my wardrobe for a really long time and so I'm going to sew it up for myself as a bit of a treat for those cooler autumn and winter mornings. Now the last pattern I'm going to sew for myself is the Harper cardigan. Now I've wanted to sew this up for a really long time as well, but I wasn't aware that it came in three different lengths. I can't believe I didn't check that out sooner, but it does come in a cropped length and then more of that sort of um, high hip length, I suppose, and then as a duster length. So I've seen a lot of the duster and high hip lengths. I've not seen very many cropped Harper cardigans out there. So I was looking around for cardigan patterns again and found that pattern and I'm so excited to give that a go and sew that up for the winter and the autumn. Now I got this knit fabric, beautiful soft sweater knit fabric from Sew Me Sunshine again and I absolutely love that blue colour. It's going to go with a lot in my wardrobe and I just think that's such a lovely colour on me. Now I have sewn the Marlowe cardigan before but I just don't love a dropped sleeve. I don't feel like that's the best style for me. 
I've also sewn the juniper cardigan before and I did wonder about sewing that up in this fabric because I absolutely love the juniper cardigan but let me show you why I'm going to make the Harper cardigan. So I have these beautiful buttons here from Ethel and Joan and you can see they're a gorgeous triangle shape and they're in a white sort of um they've got a slight sheen to them they're just gorgeous and I think they will go really well with that blue fabric. I'll take one off and hold up so you can see it properly. Uh, there it is there. So I absolutely love the shape of those buttons. I think the triangle is so fun and I think they'll look really good against that blue fabric for that cardigan. So what I thought for those buttons is I really need a nice wide button band and the Harper cardigan has a lovely wide band. I don't believe that the cardigan is made to be buttoned up, I think it's made to be left open but because my bust measurement is smaller than my waist I think I will be able to make it so that I can close that and button it up the front. So I'm hoping to share a tutorial about how to make buttonholes for different shaped buttons and also how to make buttonholes on sweater knit fabric. I've got a couple of different ways that I do that so I'm hoping to share that tutorial with you perhaps in a couple of weeks when I have made up this Harper cardigan. Now that pattern is absolutely lovely and it is free. I've seen so many people make it up on Instagram and it looks gorgeous on so many different shapes and sizes so I'm really looking forward to making that one up in the autumn. Now when we were on holiday we were actually on holiday in the Cotswolds and I've seen the lovely Rachel who is over on Instagram and she's also here on YouTube so I'll link her channel below. She has shared a few different times about the beautiful fabrics at Cotswold sewing centers and so I decided to pay them a visit whilst we were in the area and I bought this beautiful secret garden cotton poplin from them and I just think it's so so beautiful it's got the little animals it's got the fox and the robin and the secret door and my daughter loves the secret garden story we have a children's version which she loves to read and so when I saw this fabric I couldn't help but buy some for her and whilst I was there I also bought this pattern which is the Simplicity 1575 now it comes with pyjamas but also this beautiful nightgown here which is quite simple it's got a fitted bodice and then long sleeves with a little ruffle around the collar and I think that would just look beautiful in this fabric for the autumn and the winter as a nice long nightgown. She does prefer wearing nightgowns to pyjamas, she does wear both, but she does love a nightgown so I think I will make this for her as her current nightgowns are getting a little small and they're also not really long enough for the winter. So I'm going to use this lovely cotton here to make her the S1575. Now this comes in two different size bandings. I've got the age three to six. I believe it comes in a smaller size banding as well. So you could make it for younger children if that's who you're sewing for. Now, when I was in York over the last summer, I went so to socializing in York and I bought this beautiful soft pink cotton flannel. So what I will probably actually do for my daughter is make two nightgowns at the same time because she will need a couple in her wardrobe for the winter. I'll make one out of this beautiful soft cotton flannel and I will make one out of the cotton poplin. So that's two of the same pattern just because it looks like a lovely easy breezy pattern for her to wear. So that's it. I think that's probably going to keep me quite busy because both of the dresses that I want to sew up have those details on them that's going to make them a really lovely sew but also a little bit more of an involved project which I really enjoy. I want to make things for my wardrobe this autumn that are going to last me a long time, be items that I treasure and that I've put a lot of love and work into making. So looking forward to the both of those. I've not actually sewn with denim before I would love to make myself some jeans and I feel like starting with this dress pattern will be a nice introduction to top stitching and to working with denim. The pattern that I chose does say it's suitable for denim and heavyweight twill fabric so I think that should work fine. I will fill you in as I go and certainly there will be a video later on in the autumn with how I have got on with all of these sewing projects. So I do hope you'll pop back for that. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed watching it today and if you haven't yet subscribed do click on that subscribe button as well and I hope you have a lovely week ahead filled with lots of happy sewing. I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye!